Welcome to my homestead, y'all. I'm your host, Jenny Veliki, also known as the Funky Farm Girl. I'm working to create a home with a little farm, a little faith, a lot of food, and a bit of funky. I'm learning all about growing and preserving our food supply, raising chickens and children, and becoming more self-sufficient while leaning hard on Jesus. And I want to take you along for the ride. So grab yourself a cup of something wonderful, and let's visit a while. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of the Funky Farm Girl podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Veliki, also known as the Funky Farm Girl. And this is episode 68, What My Garden Taught Me in 2021. So um, way back in episode 20, I did a talk about how homesteaders live according to this rhythm of the seasons. And how different that is from city life. I know if you live in a, an urban or suburban setting, likely your year rotates sort of around the school year where um, you get out for school in the summer and everything turns slow and lazy and you just kind of do your own thing for a while. You have more vacation, more free time, more play time. And then school starts back and that ramps up your activity and that carries right on into the holidays. And then you hit the brakes hard for January until about April. And then May, you hit the gas again to get through the last little bit of the end of school year crazy. And then you get to slow down for the summer. Well, for homesteaders, it works quite differently And we're actually, spring is the beginning of our ramping up into summer where there's so, so much work to do. Um, And obviously, we've talked about just a couple episodes ago about how winter is the time for resting and chilling out and hibernating. So that fall time is really a time to slow down because the harvest starts slowing down. The canning work that you're doing starts to slow down. Um, It's a time to finish up because you're finishing up outdoor projects and you're prepping the garden for winter and you're just kind of putting everything to bed for the year. And then it's also a time to look back because you can look back and you can see where you've been over that course of the year and what you can learn from that. And so today, that's what I want to do. I want to stop and look back and see what I've learned over the past year from my garden. What kinds of things have I noticed that I can benefit from next year when I plant the next garden? And also, what kinds of things has the Lord been sowing seeds of in my heart this year? And so really, there are four main ideas that I feel like the Lord has just really taught me this year. And they apply in my garden, but they also apply in my daily life. So I want to go through those four ideas with you this week. Before I do that, though, I want to share something new that I have just um, started to invest in myself. And that is the wellness box, the monthly wellness box. A few of you may have been on my Instagram stories this week and saw that I shared a few of my favorites from my first wellness box. This wellness box comes from a Patriot-owned, American-made company. All of their products are safe and non-toxic. All of their products are free of ammonia and bleach and phthalates and sulfates and all the yucky things that you do not want in them. All of their toiletries and beauty products um, stick to the European Union standards rather than the American standards because those standards are much more stringent. And so those products are a lot more pure and safe for your skin and for you. Um, And 
this company basically has everything from toothpaste and and mouthwash to the supplements that you take every week. It's it's basically going to be everything that you need other than toilet paper and dinner. So if you just think through all the things that you use in your home, your cleaners, your toiletries, your supplements, your essential oils, all of those things are all going to be under one company. And the great thing is, is that these are high quality items at Walmart Target prices. And because they are made in the U.S. and you're buying them direct from the factory, direct from the manufacturer, then you're not having to deal with supply chain issues. So, if you would like more information about the monthly wellness box, please click the link in the show notes below or email me, Jenny, at thefunkyfarmgirl.com and just put a subject matter of wellness box and I will send you a link to get you more information. Um, as always... This podcast is not a thing that I do to produce any kind of income. So anytime I share anything with you, one, it's something that I truly and wonderfully believe in. Um, it's something that I'm willing to put my own money into. So if, if it's something that I'm using and loving, I definitely want to share it with you. And when you use and love that product as well, that's sort of a thank you from you back to me. Um for the content that you receive here and just helps me keep producing this podcast. So thank you so much for your support with that. Check out the show notes if you're interested in the monthly wellness box. Okay, so let's get started with the four lessons that my garden has taught me in 2021. Lesson number one, man plans and God laughs. Now, this is a lesson that I already really kind of knew, um, but it's something that God has really driven home to me lately. So, when I planted my tomatoes this year, I planted tomatoes and zinnias and basil all together, and I thought the basil will be kind of tucked in among the zinnias, and the zinnias will be growing, and they'll be underneath the tomato plants. Now, obviously, I didn't read the packet of how tall zinnias get. I did not expect the zinnias to be as tall as the tomatoes. So, first of all, it was very crowded, and it choked out a lot of the growth that the tomatoes could have had. So, my tomato vines weren't quite as prolific. And two, um, those zinnias being so tall and there being such a thick amount of them, they kind of leaned over a lot into my garden path. And so I was all the time pushing my way through the zinnias. They were gorgeous, and they brought in more butterflies than I ever, ever could have thought, um, and bumblebees. So I very much want to grow zinnias in my garden next year, but next year I think I'll put them by themselves and not interplanted with something like that. Um, that both of those completely overshadowed the basil and made it really, really difficult to even see it, much less pick from it. Um, and my tomatoes were overwhelmed, so they didn't produce as well. Also, if you'll remember, uh, we started out the year with a market garden tomato patch for my daughter Gracie to do a little roadside stand. And again, man plans and God laughs. We planned that that would bring her in some pocket money and she would cultivate that little plot there and she would be in charge of bringing tomatoes up to the road and selling them and she would make some pocket money to help her as she's saving up to buy a vehicle. Well, when you give a young girl a license and a high school diploma and she begins to have freedom that she's not really had before, she's not going to be as interested in tomatoes. <laughs> And then you might inherit that tomato patch instead. So where I thought I was good because I only had, say, maybe six tomato plants to deal with, all of a sudden I had 30 tomato plants and I was picking 50 to 100 tomatoes a day. I was swimming in tomatoes. 
Now, on one hand, it was wonderful blessing because mine that I planted, as I said, were overwhelmed and weren't producing as well as I had hoped. So it was a blessing in disguise. But nonetheless, it was also quite a challenge because it was way more work than I was ready to take on. Um, but I did as we always do when life is unexpected. You just jump in and do what's needed and just keep doing the next right thing. And you get through it. So, the other thing that I planned and God laughed at was cucumbers and squash. I was very, very excited to grow more cucumbers this year because pickles last year were my big thing to do. And I had so much fun with that. And I really wanted to add squash because I know that everybody talks about how prolific squash is and how they have more squash and zucchini than they know what to do with. And I thought, I am definitely doing that because I want to uh, amp up production in my garden this year. Well, they both failed. And they didn't just fail a little bit. They failed really hard and they failed really early. And the, the squash even, I tried about five different varieties. Some winter squash, some summer squash, some zucchini. Um, I planted them in three different places. Every single place, the squash bugs found them and just decimated them. Um, and the cucumbers as well. So all of my pickles this year were from Patterson Farms because I went to um, a local farm and bought all my cucumbers from there rather than growing them myself. And so I was hoping to have fresh cucumbers all summer and that didn't pan out. I was hoping to have squash and zucchini all summer and that didn't pan out either. So again, man plans and God laughs. So even in our own lives, we can plan and work and do all the right things and it can still go wrong. You know, sometimes there's going to be variables um, in gardening. Those things are going to be things like pests and weather and wildlife. In life, it's going to be adult children that make different decisions than you would want them to. Or maybe it's illness that you didn't expect or a car accident or a job loss or sometimes you know, you, you think for sure this is something that the Lord is going to provide or do in your life and then it all falls apart. Um, and we, we tend to think that if we follow the formula, it's all going to turn out okay, right? If we, if we teach our kids everything that we're supposed to and we set the example and everything, then, then they're going to turn out exactly like we hope they will. And that's not always the case. It's not to say that God isn't faithful. And it's not to say that um, my adult son, who has stepped away from his faith, will stay that way forever. Uh, I don't believe that his story is over yet because he's still here. Um, so God is writing that story and I'm learning that I can plan and God will laugh. Um, his story is not going to turn out exactly the way I would have written it, but that's because I'm not the author of life. So, number one, man plans and God laughs. Number two, kind of ties right into this. When all those things go awry, those plans don't work out and things blow up in our face or it just fizzles out or it just fails. The first thing we usually ask is why? But my number two thing I learned this year is... Sometimes we don't get to know why. Sometimes fails in your garden are going to be really easy to diagnose. I know that the cucumbers and the squash failed this year because I had a huge infestation of squash bugs. Absolutely. But sometimes there's no explanation. I planted scarlet runner beans this year on the front porch railing of our um, home. And they grew up prolifically. They were beautiful. They were green and healthy. They were lush. There was a lot of it there. There were lots of beautiful red flowers that came up all over. It attracted all kinds of bees and butterflies and hummingbirds, which were a joy to just sit on the front porch and watch. But I got 
nary a bean until about two weeks ago. And right about the time the plant started to die off because the temperatures were beginning to cool, we have not yet had a frost, but we are starting to have more and more fall-like temperatures. So when that temperature started to drop and that plant started to die off as it does when it gets cooler, all of a sudden it, it was like, oh yeah, I was supposed to give you beans. And it gave me probably about 15 beans total. I have a pretty long porch. <laughs> so this was quite a vine. Only 15 beans. I have no idea why it didn't work. I have no idea why it didn't produce. Because the plant looked to be healthy. It, there was no bug or infestation. It was in a good place. It was thriving. Um, everything else in that front flower bed was doing wonderfully. No idea why it didn't produce. I also had watermelon vine in another bed in my yard on the side. Um, and this is on the sunny side, not the shady side. Um, I bought four beautiful watermelon vines, put them in the ground back there. They quickly grew to cover the entire area. They had quite an area to stretch out in, so they had plenty of room they had plenty of pollinators. I saw bees out there on the flowers every time I went out there. Um, lots of flowers produced two fruit that when they got to be about four inches long, turned brown and rotted. And I, again, no idea what happened. I don't know why it didn't produce much fruit. I don't know why the fruit it did produce stopped growing. Um... And it didn't turn brown immediately. It it grew to be about four inches long. And then it just sat there for about two or three weeks. And then it suddenly turned brown and died. Um, and the rest of the vine was still beautiful and healthy and fine. So again, no idea why. Um, there are times that stuff happens in our life. Um, or we hear about something um, for example, the needy homemade, a homesteader, um, is a YouTuber that I like to follow. She bakes bread and on Valentine's day this past year, she was, um, on her way to Valentine's day dinner with her family and they were hit by a drunk driver and her husband was killed and her and her children were both, were all in the hospital, um, recovering and she is still, um, learning to walk and things like that while also grieving the loss of her husband. And there's no one who can tell her why that happened. Um, but sometimes things happen and we don't get to know why. But we need to continue to trust because that is going to build our faith over time. And that's going to build a greater dependency on the Lord. And sometimes that's all what, all it is, is it's a it's building greater dependency on the Lord. And this one kind of leads into number three, which is when things do go wrong, because they will, not all things end because we mess up or because we fail. Sometimes things just end because it's time. Uh, this was something that I learned the very first year. I had my large garden last year with my cucumbers. They just got to a point where they just, you know, the vein, the vine started to droop. The leaves started to drop. It stopped producing. And I remember Georgia saying, Mommy, what's happening? Your plant is dying. And I'm like, it's the end of the season. It's supposed to die. It's time. And just the reassurance that I didn't kill it. It worked and it produced for the amount of time that it was supposed to. And then it died back. Um, this year I've had the same thing happen with my purple whole peas. And with my cherry tomatoes. Um, at some point they stopped producing the flowers. And they stopped producing new growth. And they stopped producing fruit. Uh, and they just began to slowly die back. Um, and... It was comforting to know, okay, I didn't kill these, 
This is not because of a pest. This is because now is the natural time for it to die off and to pull it. Um, there's lots and lots of, of gardeners right now showing their final harvest because it's time to pull plants. It's, it's just time. And so sometimes it's not going to be that you did something wrong. It's not going to be that you're a failure or that you messed up. It's going to be that it was time. Um, it may be the end of a ministry or, or a passion that you've pursued for a long time. It may be graduating from school. You know, it's not that you did anything wrong. It's just that you're finished and it's time to move on. Maybe you're physically moving from one job to another or you're moving from a, one house to another. Maybe it's the death of an elderly family member who... They're not sick. Nothing really happened to them. It's just their time. And that's all there is. Um, I really believe that a lot of times we're not going to know why. And then sometimes the reason why is just because it's time. Um, and so I hope that brings you some amount of comfort that it's not always because we've messed up. Sometimes it's just time. It's just time for something new. It's time to make room for the next thing. Or it's it's time because what was meant to be has been fulfilled. And so now it's time to close that chapter. And then last but not least, the biggest lesson of all. Everyone's garden is different. Don't compare yours to theirs. This is one of the first things that I had to learn because I would be so frustrated at the beginning of the year because I'd I'd have all these friends on Instagram who were already picking tomatoes and mine had not even started to have flowers. Well, I was not taking into consideration the fact that they lived in a different zone than I did. So their season started way earlier than mine. So they had a head start. And I would look at theirs and think, why aren't my plants doing that? What am I doing wrong? And it wasn't that I was doing something wrong other than I was looking at what they were doing instead of focusing on what I was doing. Um, there's a lot of variation this year with gardens, particularly. I know I had some friends who suffered through horrible drought and wind and wildfires and then I had other friends on Instagram who were lamenting how much rain they were getting because they were just drowning in rain. Um, I had friends who were overrun by tomato hornworms. And I saw maybe four all year. As many tomatoes as I have, that really shocked me. Um, However, I had tons and tons of squash bugs, and I seemed to be one of the few who could not grow cucumbers and squash this year. Um, I had a horrible problem with squash bugs this year, and not very many other people I know did. Um, I grew maybe seven or eight cucumelons this year, and, you know, those are about the size of a grape tomato. They fit in your hand. Another friend of mine grew a prolific vine of cucumelons. She's in my zone. I have no idea why hers did great and mine didn't, other than she's a different gardener. Same with my watermelon. Uh, lots and lots of friends grew lots and lots of watermelon, and I could not. Um, I actually had a friend bring their kids over to see our little homestead last week, and he their little boy looked at me and said, Miss Jenny, where are your watermelons? And I said, well, I haven't been able to grow one this year. And he goes, well, there's one and it's kind of rotten and it's not very big. He said, we have three great big ones at our house. And I'm like, I'm so glad that you were able to grow watermelon this year. For some reason, Miss Jenny can't do it this year. So don't compare yourself even to a seven-year-old boy who can grow watermelons that you can't grow. It's the same thing in life. We're all running a race, just like we're all planting our gardens. But our races are going to be just as different as our gardens are. Our gardens are started at different times. 
and ending at different times. They're faced with different conditions. And so it's not a fair comparison to look at what my friend in Oregon is doing and compare it to what's going on with my garden here. It's not a fair comparison because it's a completely different place, completely different circumstances. And in the same way, we're all running a race here, but we may be on entirely different running courses. We're all running, but it doesn't mean we're running side by side, and it doesn't mean that we're on the same path. Every once in a while, our paths might intersect, but there are very few people that we're running the exact same path with all the time. And for that matter, we're not running the same pace. Some of us can keep to a higher pace than others can. Some of us are in seasons of life where we're just trying to keep up. And others of us are strolling along or cruising at a good clip and we're making lots of progress. Some of us are fighting for every inch of that course right now. And I want to encourage you that just as you don't need to look around at what everybody else's gardens are doing and compare it to yours because they're so different and the variables are so varied and all over the place, we need to make sure that we do the same thing in life. We need to make sure that we focus on our race, the course that God has drawn out for us. And yes, we may intersect paths with others, but they're not called to run our race. We are. And we're not called to run their race. So while you may feel like your race is going straight up a hill and they're loping along on a slow, easy level course, God has ordained these courses for us. God has ordained these races for us to run. And the best thing that we can do in that is to remain faithful and keep putting one foot in front of the other. Stay your course and keep your eyes on the end goal, which is Jesus. So those are the lessons that I learned from my garden in 2021. I hope that you will shoot me an email, jenny at thefunkyfarmgirl.com. And let me know what lessons you've learned from your garden this year. I love to hear from you. And you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at The Funky Farm Girl. So be sure to look me up there. Follow along with my stories on Instagram to get a better glimpse at daily life on our homestead. And then join me next week when we will be discussing The Homesteader at Rest. See you then. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. If you're inspired by what you've heard today, the best compliment you can give me is to share The Funky Farm Girl with your friends. You can stay connected by following The Funky Farm Girl on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Until we meet again next week, remember to bloom where you're planted.